Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Know How is brought to you by Carbonite. Automatically and continually back up your computer files to the cloud whenever your computer is connected to the internet for only $59 a year. Try it free at Carbonite.com. Use the offer code Know How to get two bonus months with purchase. Did you know you can have a full PC in your pocket already? Oh, today you'll know how to turn your phone into a desktop computer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Know How, where we show how to do things. I as Act Tarnley. Howdy. Report. Boy, boy, howdy. Uh, I just came in off the Ponderosa to learn how to turn my smartphone into a desktop computer. That's what the plan is. But this is a thing I've been wanting to do for such a long time. I'm going to take you back into history here, back when I was in college. This was my handspring visor. Oh, the visor. Not only did I have the visor, but it was any the Palm OS. That's right. It looked like a Palm. But it, but it had mo springboard modules. Springboard modules on the back. This yeah. thing could become a phone if you wanted to. And what I would do is I would sync up my email with this. And when I'd go to my dorm room, I'd take my computer, sync up my email, and then I'd take my stowaway keyboard. Oh, no. I'm not even no. kidding. I would take no. my keyboard. Yeah, and, and dock I would, it. I would sit there as I would dock this and feverishly write out my, my replies to my emails and I things. I think we're kind of still in the same boat. It's kind of like this. Boat. I mean, this was, this this was what I used so to do. This is not so very different you from can that. See that this is the thing I used to wow. do all the time. Anyway, I loved doing Did that. Did you not own a computer? I had a computer, but the thing is we didn't have Wi-Fi then. Ah. So, and this didn't have an ethernet port. So this is how I was such a nerd that I loved having this idea of like, I can have my PC on me, sort of. You wanted wireless. And that, and that mobile is really the key. This was an early mobile solution. And then at some time around, was it 2004? The OQ01. This thing came out. I was oh, super yeah, excited. Oh, OQ, yeah, the OQ01. Do you remember this? Yeah. It's a I showed it on live with Regis and Kelly and never saw it again. It was a that full was it. Windows XP machine that <laughs> cost something. Look how much that was. $2,000. 2000 like bucks. $2, okay. And it had a stylus. It had like a two hour battery life. Awesome stylus. You know slidey. why you needed a stylus? Those keys were this big. <laughs> it was still, it was regular XP and they were tiny targets. Crazy. And the idea was you dock it and you could have a full fledged computer. I was super psyched about that. Went nowhere. You didn't buy one, did you? No, no, Good no. I couldn't man. afford. I couldn't afford two thousand dollars for two hours I'm of battery life. I'm not sure they ever came out. Even. I mean, they had prototypes, but did they really? That ever came out, and yeah. then there was a, a model two Second that model, came out yeah. that was a little cleaner. I believe was the company was founded by Palm and Apple people, and that's why it looked so beautiful, but had very little practicality. Then the UMPC showed up. Right. I the loved ultra mobile PCs. Project another flop category. Project Origami. There it is. There it Split is. keyboard. You had a monitor in the middle. I loved this. I went to a computer show. I got to try these things out, and I was. This you didn't buy one of those, did you? No, because they were expensive, and they also had two, about, two hours of battery life. And the real problem with, with all of these technologies, it was so early, the processors on those were just really underpowered. Then came the iPhone. Now, I wrote a piece way back in 2007. I used to be a writer. This is, this PC is a, Magazine. This is, this is actually for the Apple blog. Oh, it says, Shh, yeah. don't tell anybody the iPhone is actually a UMPC. Now, this is back before there was an app store, and I thought this was actually the coolest thing I'd ever seen. It actually is a computer that you keep on you. And I got a story about this. Paul Thorat back then wrote a response to me on, on his own post. Saying, I as you ignorant slut. Saying it's not a UMPC because it doesn't have a USB port. It's more like an entertainment device. And I was uh, like, who is this guy? Yeah. I don't even know this guy. And I actually got to talk to him once I got to meet him. I'm like, Paul, what? What were you thinking? <laughs> well, because he's kind of got a point. Oh, yeah. Without any I.O., it's uh, kind of a sealed device. And then finally we get this thing. We get we have MHL that allows us on our Android phones to attach our Android phones, some of them, to a television. So really, Paul was right. It was that port that was missing. Uh, and, and now, th it, it, Apple doesn't do this, but this MHL port, which looks like the micro USB port, mm -hmm. it is a micro USB port, except it can do more. What is MHL? Now, the way it works is you have an MHL port on your, on your phone. It That's could, the same port you're charging with. It's, your, it's a micro USB connector. Exactly. But what is, makes it different? Now, what makes it different is that it has the capability of sending video out with audio without the need of a separate video card or anything else. So if you had like a USB monitor, what you would have normally is there's basically a video card in that USB device. Right. But in this case, we're using an MHL device. 
Now, and this is HDMI out of the USB port. It will be HDMI with an adapter. Now, if we go back to that little video, you need a cable, you need your, an MHL enabled device. There's a list available at, 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 we'll have a show note link to this, and it can go to your TV very easily. It's now, one caveat. Not every phone has an MHL port. You have to look to see if your phone supports this. That's right. And the thing is, there's a huge list of these things up there. So you should double check this. MHL is a standard, and it, it might be one of the millions of acronyms you see on your phone's box. If you see this right here, we start scrolling up. You'll see the list of MHL-ready phones. The Note, the S2, the 4G Touch, the Express, pretty much major Samsung phones, major HTC phones, all the, the late model phones have this. My HTC One does, the Samsung right there. Galaxy S4 does. LG, so we've got yeah. all of that. And so before we actually put this together to show you how to put this... this you can't this, look at it, right? You can't tell it's MHL just by looking at it. It looks like a micro USB it, port. The thing it's is... how it's wired. When Karsten told me that he could get video out of his S3... You I was, laughed. You mocked him. I was looking at it. I'm like, how? Right. There's no Where's HDMI the port HTML? in this. Right. And it, I don't think a lot of people even realize that that micro USB port is more than that. Now, let me ask you, because there's another thing that's, that Samsung talks about, USB to go, right? Mm -hmm. Is that the same? And it's also coming out of that port. Is that the same standard, or is it yet another standard supported by the same port? As far as I can tell, some devices can do both at the same time, right. USB uh, to go, which would allow you to hook up a keyboard, a mouse, a hard drive, something like that, or it'll do MHL. And as far as I know with the S3, I think it does one or the other. It doesn't one do both the at the same Got time. Okay. I'm not. I'm no, that makes sense. Ninety percent sure. So, on that. the reason that's important is because you might want to use a keyboard directly with your phone, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to getting video out of it. Well, we're going to show you how to do that in a minute. But All before right. we do that, let's let's thank Carbonite because Carbonite's here. We love. Yeah, that. we have an advertiser on the show, so we want to celebrate that. <laughs> woo! -hoo! Woo! -hoo! Woo! -hoo! Woo! -hoo! Woo! -hoo! Woo! -hoo! So. <laughs> Our advertiser is, they're going to say, they're going to say, well, if they're that happy, we must have done they something must go wrong. away. Well, <laughs> you got to back up your uh, data. You know mm -hmm. that. There's something on your hard drive. If it's a, Even if it's a, your, your smartphone, there's something on it that you want. We just did taxes. I bet your tax forms are on there. Maybe you've got financial records, emails. Perhaps you've got pictures, weddings, babies. Uh, I know that Jason Hell right about now has a lot of pictures on his smartphone that he doesn't want to lose. Carbonite is the solution. Carbonite is the kind of backup you want. It's automatic, so you don't have to remember to do it. It's continuous. Whenever you're connected, whenever your computer is online, it's backing up to the Carbonite cloud. And that's the third part. It's off-site. So if there's a real disaster, a fire, a flood, your house falls over, somebody breaks in and steals everything, you're not losing the most important thing about your computer, which is the data that's on it. You can always get another computer, but you may not be able to get another baby picture, that, 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 that beautiful picture that you have. So if you're not backing up, or if you're not backing up right, you want to take a look at Carbonite. Now here's the beauty of this. It's less than $59, it's $59 a year, less than five bucks a month, a month for your entire computer, everything on it. They also have plans, as you can see, for small businesses, for uh, external drives. There are a number of different plans, but they're all the same in one respect. One low flat rate for unlimited backup. $59 per year. Now, Mac or PC, I want you to try it free for two weeks. You do have to have a high-speed internet connection. Uh, once you uh, install Carbonite on your Mac or PC, it'll start backing up. In that first two weeks, in almost every case, it'll be able to make a full set of backup files and then any changes that you make to any file are automatically instantaneously backed up. It's really good for a laptop. Laptops get lost all the time. You really want to, I don't, I don't let a laptop get out of the house without Carbonite on it. So check it out. Two weeks free. You don't need to give them a credit card. Just use our um, special code, knowhow, one word, at Carbonite.com. Now if you do that and you decide to buy after that two-week trial, you'll get 14 months for the price of 12, an extra two months free. Carbonite online backup. Use the offer code KNOWHOW to try it free. I think you're going to like it. Yeah, since our, since our audience is the one that usually fixes everybody else's computers, Mother's Day's coming Share up. Share this with mom. Go and install Carbonite. Yeah, Buy that for her. My, put it on there. Mom Those pictures over, get lost. She said, darling, I don't have Carbonite. Should I have Carbonite? He said, mom, you have Carbonite. You just don't know it. Because <laughs> what's cool about it is it just happens. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to do anything about it. I often put it on the computers for family members that don't know anything about computing because they don't have to know anything. And, and then when they do call me, as they inevitably do, it's I lost up. the computer, I lost the hard drive. I say, don't worry. It's all backed up on Carbonite.
Anyway, thank you for supporting know-how. So we've got a uh, smartphone here. This is a Samsung Galaxy S3. We have a ga Galaxy S3 here, and one of the things about the, about Samsung with the S3, I'm going to show this extra adapter here now. So you have to get this extra cable. Now, this is an MHL Samsung, cable. Samsung, what they did was they decided to change the pin configuration of the output on their Galaxy S3. Now, what you have to do is either buy Samsung's proprietary adapter or a, a little converter like this that switches the pin configuration. This is about $10 from mono price. And what I'm doing is I'm going to attach this to my S3. What's on the other end of that? This is actually the, the, the normal version of MHL. So that's MHL. converting it to standard MHL, which looks just like a micro It looks USB like micro port. HD. Uh, right. it, sorry, it looks like MHL. It looks like micro USB. Right. And there's a huge controversy about this because Samsung didn't have to do this. But MHL they wanted to sell their own cable. MHL obviously. is a standard, and you will see right. that, like I said, you'll see the acronyms on the box. But one of the things is the connector itself is not standardized. So Samsung said, we don't care. Oh, there's no standard. There's a standard for the output of video, but not the connector. Okay. So the like the between So these, you can't really blame Samsung. It's not like they violated a standard. There is no standard. There's a standard for getting the video out, but there's not an understood standard and they should have done it. Not the but, connector. Yeah. So they decided to do that. And right. what I I paired that with is this This is also from Monoprice. This is from Monoprice. This is an MHL to HDMI adapter. So if I were to use that with my HTC one, again you just plug it into the micro USB port because HTC is doing it standard, I wouldn't need any special adapter. That's correct. And what do I get on the other end? Now on the other end we have HDMI out and we have a USB port because you need to power this device with your charger. Oh, that's interesting. So it doesn't work all by itself. No, you should okay. you should definitely power it. And also, it will charge your phone as you're doing this. So I also, I got this adapter just because in case I get a one later on, I can still use this piece. So, so you could buy the uh, Samsung device and it wouldn't have to buy a separate piece. Right. So I'm attaching the MHL it to our... work with a Samsung. Well, yeah, this one piece is only for my yeah, Samsung. Right. This piece is for anything that uses MHL. Right. So now I'm going to connect the HDMI cable. And we're going to connect our power so to the So that is just a standard, uh, what what voltage uh, or uh, amperage or wattage, uh, I should this, say, this do a, I This is just a standard one that comes with your phone. I think it's like 0.5 amps uh, just attached there to must be a There must be a minimum. But, yeah. Uh, it's, so that's plugged into the wall. That's the wall wart. And uh, it's probably... Yeah, it's 5 volts. 5 volts right. by so many, how many amps? Um, Can okay. you read that? 0.15 amps. Oh, that's that's pretty big. I don't know if you need something that big. It's the one that came with my phone, so right. I'm just using that one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch that's the seven and a half watts. You probably don't need that much. I'm going to switch the input of this television back here to show you how this is going to look. I'm going to input HDMI two. I can't. Somebody's asking, can I use my regular uh, USB cable that comes with a Samsung phone to do this? No. No. You need a special cable. You need a special cable for okay. this because that's the way that's the, that's way, the way Samsung they do it. bothered to do it. Now, right now, we're not seeing it in the back. Now, I've seen this happen on this TV and this TV only. <laughs> Every other test I've done works fine. Now, I actually have to go in the back on this TV. What do you have to change there, Iaz? All I got to do is disconnect the HDMI cable and put it back in, which is oh, strange. Oh, it's just to plug, replug. Yeah, I don't you know. know. This isn't unusual because you're sending an oddball uh, resolution probably to the TV. The TV doesn't sense it. <laughs> it's going to sense it. As soon as you plug in the HDMI cable, it's going to say, Well, the weird thing is. Hello, nice. The weird thing is, there there's, it is. there's my screen. Whoa, wait a minute. Hold on. Whoa, that's the actual uh, uh, Android screen. That's right. That's and the, it looks great. Now, it's, 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 a, it's mirroring our display. And like I said, when I was doing this in other tests, not an issue. So what I've that's done here. That's amazing. Now, if you have a standard version of Android. Can I try it with my phone? Uh, in just a minute. It might not look exactly the same. <laughs> I want to see if it works. I'm using the Nova Launcher because the Nova Launcher app allows me to have a uh, horizontal home screen. You need to have a landscape mode. Huh? Right. You, can, you, can, you can reposition your phone and you'll have this tiny sliver of video Guess if you what? want. I use Nova Launcher also. So we've got that. So I love Nova it's Launcher. It's in one of the settings that you have to allow okay. it to uh, switch to landscape or rotate your home screen. I'll so you'll be it. doing okay. that in your I'll Nova Launcher. I'll turn that on here. Free application, and if you've got a Samsung Galaxy S3 or anything with TouchWiz, Nova's a lot cleaner. So you Nova's great. I because I I didn't like the HTC Sense either, mm -hmm. so I just put Nova on here. Really nice launcher, but other launchers will let you do this too. So again, you want to be able to put the launcher in landscape mode. That's right. So right. gonna let, let it rotate. So that's why we've got a screen like this. This is one of my home screens. I've got a Twitter widget and things. And if you can see this, I'm moving a cursor around because I've already paired this with a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse because this device can handle multiple Bluetooth devices. What? So I'm using, I'm going to use this Apple keyboard, and I'll explain why in a minute. So I'm going to go into... So you just pair that as you would any other Bluetooth uh, uh, device to your phone. Right. I want to show off something. What's the most computing-like experience? I want to do word processing, because okay. what else would I do on the go? I'm going to go to my Google Drive over here. I'm going to launch that. You see my new document of awesomeness, as I've titled it. So we're going to wait for that to launch. This is really like a regular computer. 
Now, th my, this screen is, ten, is a 1080p, mm -hmm. so this would actually be uh, on an HDMI uh, cable with a, a high-def screen. This would look pretty good. This looks fabulous. So right now I'm this testing This is an out, S3. I'm testing out a Bluetooth keyboard here, and now wow. you might notice that this keyboard is on screen at the same time. There's another application I suggest getting something called Null Keyboard. Let me go find that in my settings. Null Keyboard. Null, sorry, Null Input Keyboard. And what let you do is it'll get rid of that on-screen keyboard. You don't need to have that on oh, your Oh, yeah, screen. I don't want that. So effectively, that's a, a keyboard you install that's no keyboard at all. Exactly. So I'm going to go and language and, to see the on -screen language and input, so I've got my... Because no. Android's not set up to assume that you're going to use a Bluetooth keyboard. It just, unlike an iPad, for instance, which will hide the keyboard when you use a Bluetooth keyboard, this phone says, yeah, nobody's going to use a real so keyboard. So what I'm doing is I've got, I've got command tabs. So if you're using an Android uh, or a, a, an Android Bluetooth keyboard or a regular keyboard, there's going to be a command option. You can command tab, and this looks familiar, right? It's your task switcher. Wow. I'm going to go into our document here. That's an email. Because I'm filling in for Windows Weekly next week, apparently. Let's change that to this. Yeah, that, that's it. Did, you, did they send you that email? I just got that email. Good, so yeah. Let me get my, if you could, that'd be great. I plan to. Yeah. So here we go. We got this keyboard. You can see that the on-screen keyboard is there for now, but it does go away after a certain amount of time. Uh, what I found, though, in our studio, this is an Android-specific keyboard right here. Ah. This thing costs about $20 from Amazon. Cheap. It's an Much Amazon, cheaper than the Apple keyboard. It's an Amazon-based keyboard, and it also yeah. has some built-in keys, media keys. So I have a home key, a search key, a play, pause button, and media controls, because I can control that with this device if I want to play music, because audio is also coming out of this device right. when I want it to. So it's, it's Android savvy. Android will respond to those mm -hmm. special keystrokes. I don't know if music's coming out of there, but we'll have to check that in a minute. But it does give you a lot of options. Uh, I could turn it up. Okay, go for that. You're busy. Let's see if this one's going to actually work. Sam and Chad, it evening. What we're going to do is double check this. This is on. Let's turn it on. We're going to wait for it in a second. Maybe the stranger. Yeah, there's the keyboard. It's connected. So I'm typing. And you see that there's a repeating key problem. If we go to this, oh, this screen yeah, right bounced. now, I want to show you something. It doesn't this have is, enough keyboard to bounce. This is very important. You see this, key, this repeat here? Yeah. In the studio is where I've seen this interference happen the most. But at home, you don't see that? No, I don't see that here. It turns out, Father Rob was talking to me about what the difference is between these two Bluetooth keyboards. What Apple does, it changes frequencies frequently. It's trying to bounce around a lot, so it's not going to have as much interference as oh, you potentially, think that's interference. As, well, yeah, because when we looked at the Wi-Fi in here and every other thing wireless, it's a mess. Hmm. But this keyboard's about twenty-five bucks. Probably doesn't do I as think well. It's a cheap keyboard. But oh go yeah, ahead. but not an issue when you're actually there's. By the way, the sound is working. Can, there we go. Can you hear the music? I bothered to mess with the, the uh, media keys. They work pretty fine. That's what I'm saying. Like I'm messing with this now. You can see the volume's changing right there, in the back. That's cool. It does work very well. I'm telling you though. If you want a keyboard that's going to handle a crazy environment like Twit, the Apple keyboard, surprisingly, was very good at handling this. Didn't have anywhere near as much trouble. And if you're noticing, I'm actually switching keyboards back and forth. Apple keyboard, because you can pair up multiple keyboards if you wanted to. Not sure why you'd want to, but you could. Amazon keyboard. So we've got those pretty, what, what pretty much all set. There, that was the other keyboard. I think that was yeah. an email I just got. Oh, okay. Now that's kind of PC-like, but I that's want to do something good. a little bit. A, I, I got to tell you, the screen looks gorgeous. I mean, it really is crystal clear. Oh yeah, the one that works great on a TV. Before we move off the keyboard, it turns out the keyboard's got a whole bunch of keyboard commands. Now I did not know this was a thing. I started looking it up, couldn't find anything. So key, there are a bunch of keyboard shortcuts. In, in Android. In Android. So if I hit Escape, it just lets me go back. Command B is browser. Browser. Calendars. Command L. Uh, command D is email, maps is M, and P was music player. Yeah. Uh, I just basically, I just found this out by just holding down the command button and just trying everything, and yeah. we'll have a list of that available. So if I wanted my player to come up, you could see I have the option of music player or play music. You have these options right at your disposal. So it's it's kind of neat to find out it's kind of computer-like, uh, but that's not powerful enough for me. You I want, want more. I want what more, more out of this. Want? I'm going to go into one of my favorite apps. It's called Splash Top. Now, Splashtop, let's see if this works. Splashtop is a lot like, it's a remote desktop kind of device or an application. So I have on my computer at home, uh, I have a Splashtop server running, and, or streamers, what they call it. And on my machine here, I have the application called Splashtop. This Vostro, this is my desktop PC at home, I'm going to try to connect to it right now. This would be fun. What it should allow me to do is, here we go, I have full access, where's my mouse? Here we go. Gonna hit continue because it shows you all these hints. I have full access to my desktop PC. So if you want to have your PC on you all the time, 
you could have Splash Shop running on your desktop PC at home, access it with the application, and you could actually see it on a much larger screen because trying to navigate. Looks like you got an error uh, ripping that Blu-ray DVD. Yeah, that Blu-ray, my Mad Men disc got yeah. ripped. It got, got a little yeah. scratched, and I was yeah. like, can I rip it to yeah. find it? And the error no, correction isn't yeah, working. Yeah. But if I tried anyway, I could probably. Yeah. So that you left when you left home, you left that running, and now you can actually, from your phone, mm -hmm. access that and close it or restart the process. And one of the cool wow, things, that is nice. One of the cooler things about this is the splash top also moves audio around. So if I wanted to watch something like Hulu here, let's see. You watch it directly from. Yeah. Your PC. So I'm going to run Hulu. Wow. And I'm going to. You can see there's a second cursor back there. And right. Do, they put a big mouse so that you can see it better on the small right. screen. Right. So this is going to play. Actually, don't need that because we're watching it on a big, pretty big screen. So this is. Yeah. That's the thing. You can have your laptop. We have this preview going, and Look at you that. should be able to hear audio once this it's comes through. It's turned up all the way. Don't turn it up oh, anymore. Oh, good point. You're going to go deaf. Oh my gosh. Look at that. I think it's kind of hard to believe. So what I've got. So to, that's on the little screen, but go ahead and show the big screen. There it is. That's the TV. I'm gonna mute this screen here, but the the deal is. Wow. I have that's a full, coming from your house. Yeah, and I'm I'm, be, I'm watching Flash content on my device, wow. and I get to go anywhere I want wow. to, and that's my PC running at home. Uh, that's, so it's mirroring. That's interesting. It's mirroring what's on the phone on the big screen. Mm -hmm. There's, I mean, you don't need an extended desktop. I trying Could to navigate, trying to navigate this with your hands. <laughs> a lot, it's a lot easier. That's obviously. why I'm like, okay, yeah. this makes a lot more sense when you right. dock it. But otherwise, you're just kind of, you that can pinch, very cool. you can pinch and zoom and try to work with that. But and I the don't. screen's going to mirror that, the big yep. screen. It's going to wow. mirror that, and it fully works. I'm a big fan of that. It gives me my PC wherever I want. And again, if I want to just hammer out emails quickly, I have that option. I like seeing things very large. This is a heck of a lot better than the old visor setup. It's, <laughs> I gotta say. That, it's just like, it's a dream to actually have this in my pocket. So just point. to reiterate, you need a phone with MHL support. Right. You, if it's a Samsung, you're going to need an adapter cable because they implement MHL a little differently. Right. Then uh, a regular MHL adapter, in this case, it's giving us HDMI out. You power it, uh, it needs a little extra power, so you power it with a plug-in USB uh, charger. And they hook it up to an HDMI television set. You're getting full screen, high def content right off your phone. And the other thing is, by the way, there are other adapters. If you want to have uh, MHL to DVI, you can do that and have the audio output through the headphone jack. You can do other things. So if you're hooking up to a monitor that right. doesn't have audio, you can do that. Wow. Uh, and there are also these newer TVs that are MHL capable. You just have an MHL to MHL cable, right. which is just different than this. You my, don't my need My TV that. has an MHL adapter. Now, let me ask you, how much did these uh, two cables cost? OK, this uh, adapter was about $10, $10 for Monoprice. And I believe this other adapter was about, I think it was 8 The MHL one so is pretty it's cheap. It's pretty cheap. Right. So that's why I put them together. I didn't wow. get the Samsung proprietary one was $20 to $30 by right. itself. And right. I could only use it with the with S3, right. which I was, I have multiple Android devices. So I'm not so going to. Let me know when you're that. ready to try it on the HTC one. Do you want to do the one right now? No, I don't. We'd have to do it on television. OK, well, let's let's go to our. <laughs> I have no idea it'll work, and I don't want to sabotage your Well, your you do here. see it works here. It works here great. Let's go to the, the feedback segment. You know, we don't have a name for this thing. So I'm going to call it the nameless feedback segment because we need a name. You could just call it the feedback segment. Nah, it's been done. Okay. So what I would like you guys to do at some point is if you give us an email at knowhowitswit.tv for the idea. What, do you, what is your idea for naming this segment? Because we are all over the place. We've got emails. We've got Twitter. We've got uh, Google+. Plus. There's over 2,000 people, 2,600 people now in the community. And uh, we got a great message from a guy named Marco who watched our overclocking episode, episode 40. He said, I would like to share a tip based on episode 40 and overclocking. Many notebook manufacturers like LG, Samsung, and Dell downclock the processor speed for stability. The reduction of the speed range between 10% and 30%. Wow. Fortunately, there's a fix for this. It's called throttle stop. You can download it here. He gave us a link, and we'll have a link to that in the show notes. Just run, set multiplier to turbo, and click to, uh, on. You'll see a huge difference. And that's the kind of stuff that happens in our Google Plus community. These guys are they are real great tinkerers. They love putting up information there. Folks are figuring out stuff. That's available at gplus.to slash twitkh. And Leo's watching the trailer I'm, for Pain Game. I'm watching Marky Mark. So that's how you set up a phone to act as your PC. I'm a big fan of being able to do this because so Now that you totally know how, fun. let's do it on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it to your phone. Double check if you got MHL, though. Uh, this phone does. It's an HTC One. Go for it. Uh, now, uh, it said uh, in the browser, uh, the uh, launcher, that it might uh, 
uh, might adjust and might not. Now, do you have to replug? Wait a minute. No. It might not. Because we were switching inputs before. There we go. Yeah. Wow. That was instantaneous. Wow. Bingo. Okay, this bingo. Like, Let's look at Flipboard. Holy what's, cow. What's your beta chrome? Oh, yeah. So this is why you want to make sure you, once you so bother. Flipboard doesn't handle that portrait mode. There are certain applications that stay. In it a, doesn't It doesn't know. But uh, but my but my launcher does, and that is pretty amazing. Look at that. The quality is excellent. Oh, I gotta go. It's time to do know-how. Okay, you should go. Okay, do that. let's let's delete that that calendar entry right there. Look at that. That was just plugging it in. Okay, pretty amazing. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. That's without the Samsung adapter because well, you know HTC Samsung. did it right. You compare it to the keyboard, knock yourself. So out. now that you know how to turn your smartphone into a desktop computer, why don't you go out and do it? Good job, Ias. Thank you. We'll see you next time. On know. Yeehaw.